a, a pretty, you know, what you see is what you get, you know, kind of gal. Um, but I, I always uh, have liked this very, very ancient uh, test of who you are. And you, you take this test, you answer instantaneously. You don't think about it, whatever. You just click on what, it, you know, resonates with you in your soul right away. And uh, then you get back what your possibilities of what you are. Um, and it's a, a gram. And it starts at uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and each part of that, there's there's um, um, certain individuals that will work well with you. Certain individual that you might want to um, keep on the fringe of your friendships, if you will. Um, some people you want to bring close to you because they help you. You know that kind of thing. Um, so I, I've discovered on the Enneagram, and that's how you pronounce it, but it's spelled E-N-N-E-A-G-R-A-M. Um, I'm a type four, which is the individualist, type nine, the peacemaker, and type seven, the enthusiast. And it, this really fits me like a T, so I thought I'd just read it to you really quickly. So the individual is type four. It has sensitive feelings and are warm and perceptive. So how to get along with me? All right, give me plenty of compliments. They mean a lot to me. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, be supportive, a friend or partner. Help me to learn to love and value myself. Respect me for my special gifts of intuition and vision. Though I don't always want to be cheered up when I'm feeling melancholy, I sometimes like to have someone lighten me up a little. Don't tell me I'm too sensitive or that I'm overreacting. Mm. <laughs> uh, what I like about being a four, my ability to find meaning in life and to experience a feeling at a deep level, and I can go real deep. My ability to establish warm connections with people. Admiring what is noble, truthful, and beautiful in life. My creativity, intuition, and sense of humor. Being unique and being seen as unique by others. Having aesthetic sensibilities, being able to easily pick up the feelings of people around me. What's hard about being a four, experiencing dark moods of emptiness and despair. Feeling of self-hatred and shame, believing I don't deserve to be loved. Feeling guilty when I disappoint people. Feeling hurt or attacked when somebody misunderstands me. Expecting too much from myself in life. Fearing being abandoned. Obsessing over resentments. Longing for what I don't have. And it pretty much fits me to a T. But I also have God in my life. So that's my backup plan. You know, if you will. Um, and so I can get out of those melancholic feelings because I know I have the Lord and he's got my back and um but sometimes I like to, to be in that in that place um but when I'm feeling like you know melancholy or depressed or whatever and I know who I can call who will just you know take me right out of that and I'll be okay you know so like my brother John, for example, <laughs> you know, um, or, or, or other friends that I have that I can do that with. So, um, and of course my wife. <laughs> uh, sometimes she gets me, sometimes not. Sometimes I have to keep reminding her. Um, uh, I, I tend, to, when I talk to her in American Sign Language, I tend to be very facial with her, which is all the grammar and and uh, emotion and affect and, and that, that sort of thing. So um, she's very sensitive. And so it's hard for me sometimes to just be me um, always because she's overly sensitive. And so that, that kind of uh, gives, us, gives us a little, sometimes a little riff. And so we have to take a step back, take a breather, 
get some discernment and then go, oh yeah, well, it's because you're going through this da 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 da, you know, or I'm going through the da da da, and we have to clear it up, and then, you know. So anyway, so I just thought, eh, as my subscribers, you guys can get to know me a little bit better. And if you want to do your own test, you just put in enneagram.net, sorry, enneagramtest.net, and again, I'll spell it for you, E-N-N-E-A-G-R-A-M, test, T-E-S-T, -E all one word, dot net, and then do your own test, and you can find out who you are. <laughs> um, sometimes it's hard to put in words. Sometimes it, it's hard for us to say to other people, well, this is who I am, you know, and this is great for work, if you, you know, if everybody agrees to do it. Um, great for bosses to know more about their employees, how to deal with them, you know, how to deal with people that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, uh, you know, great for relationships. Here, this is who I am, you know, and, and pretty, like I said, it, yeah, it fits me to a T, really does. But you have, you have to be honest with your questions. Like I said, do it instantaneously. Go with your gut. Don't overthink it. Just, you know, answer truthfully. And it, it should reveal who you are. So anyway, we uh, are in the Swedenberg still. And um, I'm just going to um, con continue to read that. I was, here we go. Um, I just I find it very fascinating about how Swedenberg was very intelligent, understood psychology. You know, the Lord really allowed him to have these experiences because he knew his ability. Even for back in the 1700s, this guy was far beyond his years. Okay, in a, and um, you know, being given the ability to go. Uh, uh, you know, how do I say it, uh, with visions or to, or to have his spirit physically be there in, in other, in heaven, in other realms of have, heaven, um, and to accurately record, have conversations with angels and other spirits, um, and to give us this insight of, you know, what the Lord truly expects, expects from us. And how to, you know, use his word in a more deeper, meaningful way than, than just taking it literally. Um, uh, you know, the Swedenberg Foundation ha has explanation of symbolisms that are used in our Bible that I think are just powerful stuff, like mountains being the example of God Houses, you know, and there's all these different symbolisms. Um, and Swedenberg, again, like I said, he wrote in Latin, so it took a long time. And they're still trying to figure out how to translate a lot of this stuff. So, uh, um, so, you know, it's taking them a long time. And they're trying to rewrite it in today's English as well so that we can understand it. <laughs> today um, and let's see okay. 131 130 yeah okay hang on one second Thirty-two. Okay. Uh, oh no. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. All right. So. So. 
When the sequence is reversed, though, it's true. The sins have been set aside. They are forgiven. Repentance must be precede forgiveness, and apart from repentance, there is no forgiveness. This is why the Lord told his disciples to preach repentance for the give, forgiveness of sins, okay? So that's what we were talking about. And when Peter asked how many times, he, you know, he said infinitely. So um, it's incredible if we did not have this complete freedom, we would not only be beyond salvation, but would completely perish. Listen to reason. We are all immersed in many kinds of evil from birth. They are in our volition. We love whatever is in our volition. It is... That is, we love all the intentions that come from within, and we intend whatever we love. This love of our volition flows into our discernment and makes itself felt there as pleasure. It moves from there into our thoughts and into our conscious intentions. So if we were not allowed to think the way the love of our volition wants us to, the love that is within us by hereditary, um, that love would stay close in and never come out where we would see it, where we could see it. Any such hidden love for evil is like an enemy plotting against us, like pus in a sore, like a toxin in the blood, like an infection in the chest. If they are kept hidden, they hasten us to our end. On the other hand, when we are allowed to think about evils of our life's love, even to the point of wanting to act them out, they are healed by spiritual means the way a life-threatening illness is cured by physical means. I need to explain what we would be like if we were not allowed to think in keeping with pleasures of our life's love. We would no longer be human. We would have lost the two abilities called freedom and rationality that are in essence of our humanity. The pleasure of those loves would take control of the inner reaches of our minds so completely that the door would be open wide. We would, we then would not be able to avoid talking and acting in similar fashion, displaying our madness not only to ourselves but to the whole world. Eventually, we would not know enough to cover our private parts. It is to keep this from happening that we are allowed to think about and to intend the evils we have inherited, but not to utter and do them. In meanwhile, we learn civic, moral, and spiritual principles that work their way into our thinking and displace these insane principles. The Lord heals us by this means, only through, though only to the extent that we know how to guard the door, not unless we believe in God and ask for his help to resist our evils. Then to the extent that we resist them, he does not let them in our intentions eventually not into our thoughts. We do therefore have freedom to think as we wish in order that our life's love may come out of hiding into the light of our discernment. Otherwise, we would have no knowledge of that evil and could not abstain from it. It would then follow that the evil would gain strength within us to the point that there was no space for recovery within us. And since the evil of parents is passed on to their progeny, hardly any space for recovery in any children we might beget. The Lord makes sure, however, that this does not happen. The Lord could heal everyone's discernment and make us incapable of thinking evil, cap capable only of thinking good. He could do this by various fears, by miracles, by messages from the dead, by visions and dreams. However, healing only our discernment is healing us only superficially. Our discernment and its thought processes are outside of our life, while our volition and its desire is in the inside of our life. This means that healing only our discernment would be curing nothing but the symptoms. The deeper, uh, malignness, um, closed in and with no way out would first devour what was nearest to it and then what was further away until finally everything was dying. It is our volition itself that needs to be healed, not by our discernment flowing into it, but by being taught and encouraged by our discernment. Oh, 